about six different um, combinations of accessing this meeting. I don't know if there's going to be able to cover all of us, but I do know that um, the purpose of this meeting are Monday, May 11th, 2020, at uh, 5.43 p.m. Uh, in Carson City, in Nevada, uh, at uh, the various homes of the members of the Cultural Commission. Okay? And, Danielle, can you do a, a roll call, please? Chairperson Danielle. Here. Chair Ramirez. Commissioner Bow. Here. 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 Commissioner Leva. Here. Commissioner Bugley. Commissioner McBride. Here. Commissioner McCormick. Commissioner Long. Oh. And I see that uh, Bugley's here, but I think she's muted, so. This isn't the official roll call, is it? Yes. It? Okay, then a quorum is present. <laughs> but I need to ask, uh, do we have any written comments from the public? What? I'm on the phone. It's Barbara. Uh, Desi, did we receive any um, public comments at the Carson.org website? I would not um, know that. I'd have to defer that to Danielle. Danielle? I'm sorry, what was the question? Do we have any written comments from the public? Um, not that I would know of. I'm not, I actually wouldn't know if there's any written comments from the public, I don't think. Okay, so we, we have done the call to order and the roll call and the quorum. A public comment, since we're not going to be taking any public comment, I'm not going to read item number two. Just to interrupt, I believe public comment is being allowed via phone. So, Desi, is there anyone on the phone for public comment? I have um, a few members in the room. Um, I can identify them by name. I do not know if they're here for public comment. So, um, there's Carol Scott. Carol Scott, we're having public comment right now. <laughs> Carol Scott, would you like to make public comment? No, I just got in. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I know this is difficult for everyone. Um, we did a roll call for Danielle. You said that we do have a quorum for the record. Um, 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 Milo is no longer a commissioner. Were there any other absence on your list? Um, I didn't hear uh, Chairperson Deneo, and I didn't hear Chairperson Ramirez, but I might have just been going too fast. Why don't you call their name again? They, they are both on the line. Okay. And I am here. Barbara Deneo, I am here. Okay, okay, perfect. So, and Commissioner Long? We don't have a Commissioner Long. I don't know why I have it on here. Um, okay, then, yep. Um, everybody else is present then. All right. Okay. So, item number three, can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? It's item number three on the agenda. Yes. 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 Adoption of the agenda as presented. Does anyone have any changes or additions to the agenda? 
There's no changes to the agenda. This is Mark Salinas for the record. All right. All right. Okay. It's Barbara again. Item number four, possible action, approval of the minutes of January 27, 2020. Any comments, changes, additions? I have a comment. Okay. This is that, Eleanor. That is I have a comment on um, the next to the last paragraph. It says Silver Oak Gold Club. It should be Silver Oak. Or no. Not Silver Oak. I have to find it. But it's what on page are you on? Page six. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ellie. Here's the... it said... Go ahead, Ellie. You had a comment. On page, on... It's on page seven, next, next to the last paragraph. It says Eagle Valley Gold course it should be golf course golf course <laughs> is there a, a motion to approve with the uh, uh, change of a word hello somebody want to move to approve with the... oh, Hello? This is Lupe. I move to approve the minutes with the change noted. All right. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Desi, would you call the, the roll, please? Speak, uh, Madam Chair. Desi, she made Madam Chair. Danielle. That'll be yes. Thank you. Danielle. Thank you. We got a, a motion from Mr. Ramirez and then a second from Commissioner Bugley. Correct. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Commissioner, just as a reminder, um, just make sure you identify yourself, your, your name before you speak. Uh, just for um, clarification, because we have people calling in as well that don't have access to the screens. All right, on to the um, okay, item Major number five. Bill. Item number five for possible action. This is Barbara Deneo. Discussion and possible action to make recommendations to the Redevelopment Authority regarding applications requesting fiscal year 2021 Redevelopment Arts and Culture Special Event Funding. So, do you want me to read the staff summary? I'll take it from here, uh, Commissioner Dineo. Thank you. So, uh, this year, as in past years, uh, we're grateful to have an allocation from the uh, Redevelopment uh, Authority Citizens Committee in the amount of $25,000 for uh, arts events, which include music, theater, and uh, exhibitions. And uh, this year, as in past years, we will be um, uh, presented uh, those proposals given a three minutes uh, time limit by the four applicants this year, the Brewery Arts Center, um, Carson City Symphony, Mile High Jazz Band, and uh, Wild Beach Children's Theater. Um, there are two recusals. I'll ask commissioners to read in just one moment. Let me just uh, get us a little further on this. Um, the procedure for uh, today is that um, I'll put up the um, Scoring criteria right now, which is the same as in years past. Except I can't see it. Barbara, I can't see it. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six categories. Um, a score from zero to five, zero meaning non, five meaning outstanding. Um, these criteria, these scoring criteria, um, will be uh, collected by each commissioner by, for each applicant. These commissioners have the, these sheets already. And then we will plug them, I will plug them live into um, this 
Excel sheet. So here we have our applicants. In this column, we have the, their amount requested. The amount requested this year um, is 17,500 of the 25,000 available. Column C, we have the amount received last fiscal year that the commission uh, uh, recommended and that redevelopment approved. Here we have the initials of each um, commissioner. And it's in these uh, cells here, which I will type in uh, a score. Now, recusing oneself um, would not affect your score. For example, here, or the BAC, I'll use them as an example. Uh, if I put a perfect score here among two commissioners and leave the rest uh, blank, you'll see that their score presented percentage is 100%. So uh, we'll go through um, each applicant one at a time. Um, we'll give the applicant three minutes. I'm going to have a stopwatch here. After that, I can allow some Q&A between the commissioners and the applicants. We'll give a moment for the commissioners to adjust their scoring privately, and then I will ask aloud for each commissioner to uh, give me those scores, and I will plug them in um, as I'm doing here, for an example. Um, and then here at the end, we'll get a score percentage. This score percentage is based upon the request. So if the score percentage is 100%, meaning all commissioners scored 30, uh, they would be um, their, the uh, item in column L would be the full 2,500%. Should the score percentage be 50%, let's say, that amount, for example, would be 1,250. Um, after we collect the scores from all four, I will give the commission uh, an opportunity just to look over their scores one more time. If they want to bump things up or down or adjust it as they wish, they can. Um, their recommendation will then go on record, and I'll present that for uh, final approval to the redevelopment authority on June uh, June 4, I believe it is. Any uh, questions regarding that process? Not. Um, I'll ask. Just for clarification, so the scoring sheet that you provided us, Mark, it does have the um, scoring um, that we are supposed to be using, high being the highest that we score that applicant per category, correct? Um, the cultural commissioner score sheets that each cultural commissioner has? Yes. Yeah. So each each applicant has a column, and there are, um, there are six um, Scoring rubrics, right. uh -huh. yeah. six uh, categories. The highest score it would be a five. Whatever it is, we're gonna. I'm gonna ask those commissioners to add up their total score and read that to me. And the highest would be a total of thirty points per. Correct. The high, being the highest. So thirty being the highest per applicant. I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. Identify so, yourself. Ramirez. So the highest score would be 30, correct? Correct. Okay. Scoring 0 to 5, 6 times. So a perfect score would be 30. Um, with that, I'll ask um, Desi if you could open uh, Gina Hill's um line um so she can do her presentation please gina, are you with us gina go ahead and state your name for the record please your patience we're happy to have you here again this year um i'm going to give you three minutes the commissioners have your proposal as the as they do of all the applicants and they've reviewed them and i've asked them to score them in advance of the of today's meeting uh, this three minutes allow you to um, give it that extra push to um, to to uh, sell your proposal, and I'll allow uh, any Q 
Q&A um, between you and the commission. Sound good? Yes. All right, here you go. This is Gina Lopez-Hill from the Brewer Arts Center and the BAC seeks funding for uh, performance rights and musician fees for a fall production of Falsettos. As uh, set in the early 80s, Falsettos is a story about family, different kinds of love. And what makes the story uh, really unique is it's about men and women and the complexity of life. It's important to produce this show at this time because it takes place in the early 80s and the theme is very heavily evolved around the AIDS crisis. At the time, nobody knew the AIDS crisis and what it was. It doesn't even have a name in the show, but it is very relevant to what is happening at the time. And I think that today's audience um, can relate to um, really the fear about the pandemic. It also portrays homosexual relationships in a serious manner. This has not happened uh, or been seen on stage in Carson City before. And it is important because it allows people to have an experience in the theater that represents them. The fact that the characters are gay in the show is not really even the main focus. It's about love. They are represented with dig dignity and depth. And it is important for the people um, who can relate to this to experience this in the theater. Uh, we are double casting the show with an adult cast and a youth cast with no modifications in the dialogue or script. The youth today uh, haven't really digested how quickly things have evolved for gay rights in this country. And it is important to know the struggles that came with this part of history. And the fight for equality, although it has come a long way, is clearly not over. It also gives actors, both young and old, the opportunity to act in a serious show. And it's set to music, it's an opera, with a live band. And above all, it's great music. And the recent 2016 revival on, on Broadway did very well and really struck a chord in this audience in today's day and age as it did in the early 1980s when it was originally produced. Thank you, Gina. Um, commissioners, any um, questions or comments for the Brewery Arts Center's proposal? This is Barbara. I think it's a wonderful direction and certainly is needed in today's society. Thank you. Commissioner Ramirez, I also uh, am in support of this um, topic, and especially, like you said, this is you know critical, especially in today's times and today's uh, climate. I think we all need to focus on on love. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Any other comments? This is Karen. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that. Can, can you hear me? Yes, Karen, we can hear you. Okay. I just have a question with regards to social distancing and attendance and how you're accounting for that. How's that going to work, Gina? I don't know. We, uh, it's going to be in October. So we are going to go with the guidelines available um, directed by the government, the governor at that time. It may take a different form than live theater. It may not. It may be outside. It may be other. We'll make it work um, however we have to. Okay. And we can always uh, adjust the dates as well. Uh, theater companies and theater rights organization has been, have been very flexible in terms of that. Okay, great. Thank you. This is Mark Salinas for the record. Commissioners, I did uh, neglect to uh, make an, an opening comment, which um, which, which reflects uh, today's uh, pandemics and the decisions that you're going to be making today. Uh, this is a, um, a grant which is, um, which is a reimbursable grant. And um, the events are allowed to happen within this next fiscal year. Of course, uh, these applicants um, are going to do the best that they can to stick to the timeline that they provided, I'm sure. Um, but, you know, as you know, we all as a community, as a state, as a nation are kind of uh, playing this out day by day. What I can offer is this, is that I do know that a lot of um, state 
organizations have um, changed their grants a little bit in, the, in light of the pandemic. Not to say that we should hear, but um, it's going to be important, I think, for these other grants, for these applicants, to know that there's at least allocations towards their efforts in the uh, in the further effort to get uh, matching grants from other organizations. Um, we can certainly, if for some unknown reason, an event uh, doesn't happen, um, we know that through the final report that they provide uh, this office. And if the commission uh, wants to, we can certainly, um, you know, which might be fair for all at a later date in 2021, during this fiscal year, uh, take another look at, um, at what was allocated uh, to the to the applicants. I think it would be a boost of confidence for the applicants to, to know that the commission did allocate a certain dollar amount to their um, to their uh, event um, should they reach their uh, finish line. Um, but I think um, you know we can certainly give them room to. Um, to experience the unknown as we are. And, and if the commission wants to um, make allocations for, for this, and I can bring that to the redevelopment and explain that to them, at least these applicants know that there is money set aside at a certain amount for them to, uh, to, to, to try to make this happen. Any questions on that? No, that's Barbara, that's reasonable. I had a couple of questions, Gina, it's just, for information uh, on the budget, the, the, the BAC budget, the, the $172,000 uh, loan, um, that is still outstanding? Uh, yeah, that's the note on the um, performance hall building. Performance hall, and that has been paid down from what sum? I mean, in other words, I'm saying, because you have a positive bottom line, you know, and excess of revenue, you know, how is, how is that being paid down? Well, it's being paid down in monthly installments as for our agreement with the lender. Um, okay. and, and, you know, we, we have reserves for times like these where we have three months with no revenue. So it's important that, that we balance um, our bottom line. Okay. To the rest of the members of the commission, are there any further questions? Is there anything anyone wants to ask of Gina before we uh, begin to look at the scoring? You know what, I do have another question. This is uh, Commissioner Ramirez. I do have a question for you, Gina. I know that right now, even though we're all so desperate of, you know, living a semi-normal lifestyle, we understand that um, the financial component is going to be a factor to allow us to do that. So uh, would you um, be open to the idea of perhaps um, giving a discount on the, on the ticket sale? All of our, um, all of our promotions that we do at the Brewery Arts Center are barrier-free, meaning uh, if you can't afford to pay for a ticket, we will find you a sponsor or you may volunteer to uh, work the event and get it um, for free as well. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Yes. Not really um, a problem at our events. Any other questions, comments? Mark, do I turn it back over to you for yes, the scoring process? Yes, please. Thank you, Gina. So I have the commissioners uh, listed in alphabetical order here. I'll give you a brief moment to add up your score for the Brewery Arts Center. And then uh, we'll start with uh, Commissioner Abowd when you're ready to. Um... I'm ready, Mark. Go ahead, please. All right. I gave uh, a 29, and okay. the only point difference was on number three because I feel like the subject content, though I think it's wonderful, is going to have a little bit more of a limited audience. So that's why I, I just docked one point for that. Okay, thank you. Um, Eleanor, um, Commissioner Bugley, you're up next, please. Okay. Is it okay for me to vote on the other organization's applications? Uh, 
Y yes, and when we get to, when after we score the Brewer Arts Center, uh, I'll have both you and Commissioner Ramirez read your recusal for the symphony. Okay, um, I vote 30. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner uh, Deneo, please. Okay, I voted 28, and mine was on uh, item number 104, the audience benefit derived from the project. I would love it, but I'm not so sure that Carson is going to be jumping up and down. So I have a 28. That's why it's in court, Barbara. <laughs> well, I know. I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Leva? Uh, this one has a 30 for me. Thank you. Commissioner McBride? Terry, Terry, you there? Um, we can't hear you, Commissioner McBride, if you are on the line. Um, we'll go uh, next to Commissioner Ramirez, please. I give her a 30. Okay. Commissioner McBride, do you have a score for the BAC, please? Um, her, her sound is off. She has a written response of 30. Okay. Do you, uh, do, 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 can, some, can anyone hear Commissioner McBride on the uh, conference? Somebody is seeing her score. That's, I saw a score on my screen, and it said I give, her, I give the BAC a 30. That was from Terry. Okay. Perhaps her so self mic is broke, and she, they're not, we're not hearing her through her phone. She's typing her responses. Um, the average score is 29.5 out of 30 for the BAC. Score percentage is 89.33%, which yields a uh, $2,458 um, uh, score. Next is the, um, and I just want to let all applicants know that uh, we're going to go through all four, score them. I'll have the commission take another look. Um, these are recommendations to the redevelopment authority whose uh, funds uh, these are, and I'll be making uh, that presentation as I annually do with uh, Lee Plummel there at their commission uh, meeting. Uh, at this time, I'd like uh, to ask Commissioner Hughley uh, and Commissioner Ramirez to read a recusal um from the da's office on scoring for the carson city symphony please this is commissioner bugley nrs 281a.420 requires me to disclose a conflict of interest and abstain from voting when i have a disqualifying conflict in my private commitment i am president of the carson city symphony association and I am treasurer of the Mile High Jazz Band Association. Both organizations have submitted grant applications. Because these organizations will be competing with other individuals and groups for funding, I feel that this is a disqualifying conflict, and as such, I will not be voting on this matter. Thank you. Commissioner Ramirez, NRS 281A.420 requires me to disclose a conflict of interest and abstain from voting when I have a disqualifying conflict. I am the project advisor for the Latin expressions, expressions conducted by the Carson City Symphony Association which has submitted grant application for consideration by the Carson City Cultural Commission. Because these organizations will be competing with other individuals and groups for funding, I feel that this is a disqualifying conflict, and as a result, as such, I will not be voting on this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, there was a representative for the Carson City Symphony that was going to speak for the three-minute allocation. I think there was uh, Grant Mills. Mr. Mills, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. 
Great. Uh, and you've been following the process so far? Yes, I have. Fantastic. So if you're ready, I'll give you three minutes to um, make your proposal. Go ahead. Good evening. Thanks to everyone. I'd just like to support the application that the Carson Symphony has made to you. We were uh, successful last year, and we uh, started the uh, highly successful Happy Treasure Series. Unfortunately, due to COVID, that was cut somewhat short. Uh, but it was just an excellent expansion in our culture and our types of presentation. I think it was a, a good start. For Directors, instructors, instructors. Uh, and we'll continue to fund these. Yeah, the Latin expressions will continue on. I thought we were out there for a second. Uh, yeah, it's just been a, a great expansion to what we do. I think coming up, we also have. in front of me, but there it is. We have coming up, uh, Gabriel Giro, who was one of our guest stars for Green Man, uh, from Uruguay. And, uh, then in December, we have Holiday Tree coming up, which includes Victorian dancers and uh, a flutist coming in and a singer coming in and the uh, source is coming in and, and then for one of the things I think will be an excellent addition, uh, a time to vote about that. This uh, concludes by Gwyneth Walker, and it's going to be uh, celebrating the passing of the 19th Amendment. And given these times and the, uh, I think the voter unrest that we're going to see that's out there, I think it's just to be an excellent program to do. <laughs> Uh, we presented concerts for 36 years, but each of the programs is different and unique to itself. And uh, that's kind of my presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mills, for that. Um, commissioners, any questions or comments for the Carson City Symphony application? I have a question, Mark. This is Karen. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. All right. I have um, two questions. One is my previous question about social distancing and how they're going to count for that in, in some of the venues. And the second question is, do they get a nonprofit break on the space rental at the community center? Uh, it's my understanding that there is a nonprofit um, um, uh, price that's offered to um, all of our arts organizations there who use the uh, facility. Uh, Mr. Mills, do you want to speak to the um, uh, proposed plans in place for social distancing? Sure. As far as the audience goes, uh, given our typical attendance at uh, Oldrick Theater, uh, a distance, we don't feel like creating a social distancing would be, it will be a little bit limiting, but not unduly so. Uh, as to the performer side, that we have to look at what criteria is in place at that date. Uh, if it's stringent, we may have to change our structure to uh, not full symphony group and very partial groups or smaller ensemble if the distancing requirements for the performers on stage. Uh, most of you have seen our performances, the stage is pretty full. Uh, we'll just have to adjust that based on the social distancing rules at that time. That's the uh, audience part I think we're in pretty good shape on. Okay. Commissioner um, Avout, I think um, that's going to be a reoccurring um, question for all applicants as all of these applicants are performance based, you know. Yes. Um, and uh, they certainly have a, a lot to consider um, with the guidelines, um, not only within the state, um, locally that we're going to implement, and, and of course the grant guidelines. So um, 
you know, you know as always, uh, applicants are urged to keep in contact with the department in case there's uh, changes. And we can certainly um, allocate what we can now and reassess that vis-a-vis -vis what the applicant was able uh, to accomplish. And I think that's probably a fair measure. Any other questions? Commissioner Janae has a question. Um, it, again, I am concerned because over the years, um, we're talking about bodies in seats, and percentage-wise, has there been a growth of audience partic participation and attendance to these events, or is it pretty static? Is it pretty much you know, you have a cadre of community who who follow you, or is it growing? The audience attendance. Okay, so we're ready. Yeah, Mr. Mills, uh, that question was directed to you. Okay, so the answer is yes. Our attendance has varied extensively over the years. Uh, Part of our goals is to come up with the first entry the types of music we perform, as well as there is seasonal differences in our attendance. Uh, our most recent example of the Latin series, we just had an excellent increase in attendance. Uh, we were just extremely pleased that it, it was a new era we were reaching out to, and we certainly saw, I'm shooting from the cuff here, but Probably a one third increase from our seasonal attendance for those countries for those concerts, which is uh, just excellent. Uh, some of our programs, we, we have a very high percentage of attendance. Typically, the December concert is our best attended in Boulder Theater concert. Our, our annual two annual outside performances are very well attended compared to years past so i think we're uh, we're moving up in the world with our diversity increasing our attendance over some of the some of the past years uh i've been with the symphony quite a while i think we're headed a very good direction and these are expanding our guest Help and all has been a part of that, and that's what this school is orienting us for. Okay, I noted that um, this is a very difficult time, and certainly this probably won't be, be the year it could be accomplished, but can some thought be given to the development of a grant writing committee who really researches and 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 works to develop more support whether it's by local business or state and national that was that was to you again okay, so our answer is yes we uh, we had a chance with uh, members on various um, seminars to improve our, improve our grant writing and, that, and certainly we have increased our efforts to go out and write more grants. Uh, certainly, it's, uh, Gibson's been our new help in the, towards accomplishing that. Uh, it's, it is a talent, a specific talent to Right, and the other part of it is evaluating what grants that are out there might fit us because there are lot of grants out there, what fits you and what's not a good fit. So the evaluating process is also very important. Okay, well, I certainly hope that that can be a discussion on the part of your board. This is uh, Deneo who is doing the speaking and questioning. That's it. Thank you. Commissioner, so, Commissioner other... Go ahead, Commissioner Ramirez. I have, a question. I have a question for you. Am I able to uh, add um, comments to this particular application, or am I to, to abstain from that as well? 
Uh, Commissioner, you are uh, resolve, you're, uh, recusing yourself from um, uh, discussion and, and action on, on this item. Okay, great. Any other uh, comments for the uh, Carson City Symphony, please? If not, we'll start with Commissioner Abowd mm -hmm. and then Bugley with the scoring. Uh, sorry, um, uh, Commissioner uh, Abowd and then Commissioner Deneo, please. Okay, my score is a 28. And um, the only two points taken off were just the, the level of audi audience participation and the diversity and creativity. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Jaleo, followed by Commissioner Leva. Yeah, my exact 28 for the very same reasons uh, that had already articulated. So I'm a 28. Thank you. Commissioner Leva. Um, I'm going to give this one a 30. Thank you, Commissioner uh, McBride. They were looking here more grant sources, and we got a big one last year. Uh, Commissioner Bugler, can you uh, press mute on your on your mic, please? Um, Commissioner, can you help me read uh, Commissioner uh, McBride's score and the comments? Oh, I'm on the phone. Oh, great. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm on the phone. Great. Okay. Yeah, I'm not on screen anymore. I'm just sticking with the phone. My score okay, is 30. Okay, thank you. Her score out of 30 is 29. That's 96.67%. Uh, $5,000 request is yielding $4,833. Um, the next uh, presenter will be Mile High Jazz. Uh, we can unmute David Bugley's phone. David, can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. And you've been following the process so far in your... You're ready for your three minutes? <clears throat> yeah, I don't get any screen time, though. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm glad. Here we go. Okay. Hi, I'm David Dugley, president of the, uh, Car the Mile High Jazz Band Association and one of the chief Jazz and Beyond organizers. The Jazz and Beyond Music and Art Festival started in 2004. This will be our 17th year. We're planning to have this from August 7th to August 23rd. We have a proven record of delivering um, these performances over the years. We feature over 100 performers in 25 or more events over the 17 days. Uh, sometimes some of these events, we list them as many as 50, if you include the musical events that we also pick up and list in our website, uh, those events that are in bars and restaurants and uh, other places like uh, Comic Coffee. Most events are presented for free. Our agreements with performers can be flexible in the times of this COVID-19 uh, situation. Since many of our uh, talent are from local areas, uh, these are the ones who add vibrancy to our community. We have uh, no paid administrative staff. The bulk of our budget goes to musicians and uh, some technical staff, one in particular who deeply discounts uh, his cost to us. We are proud to present so much entertainment for families for free. With most of um, our outdoor, with most of our events being in outdoor locations, and most of them in the redevelopment we want, we feel we can help maintain social distancing. Locations are such as Silver Saddle Ranch, where we do a special day there, McFadden Plaza, um, perhaps the Yard Center. We haven't worked out. Uh, details with that. Uh, Capital Amphitheater, the Comic Courtyard, which is outside of Comic Coffee. One of the things we're doing this year is called the Open Studios Tour, and we have about 24 or 25 artists who plan to participate. They will, uh, some of them will be working in individual studios, and people can go visit the studios on the last two days of the festival. And this is one where a uh, situation where we feel we can easily deal with social distancing and contact tracking because we can possibly ask people to sign in as they come by and also give us an opportunity to build our list of contacts for future events. Um, 
we do our advertising through um, UNR, media releases, Facebook. Uh, we have uh, the Mile High Jazz Band website, but we also have a website just for the festival. Um, we mentioned our performances at when Mile High Jazz Band, the 17-piece, 18-piece band meets and performs. We use MailChimp, we blast, we do um, public um, reports to the appeal and yeah. now. And 37% of our attendees come from out of a town last year. Our support comes from sponsors, individuals, state grants, the ads in our programs, Music Performance Trust Fund, which is a stamp of uh, approval. Um, in, in the past, you're, you're, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the three minutes is up. Okay. Uh, commissioners, this is your uh, time now to ask any further questions uh, or comments about um, the applicant. Hey, Mark. Who's going to speak now? Is it, is it uh, Janeo's turn? About. Go ahead, Karen. Go ahead. Um, David, I just have a couple of questions. Um, one, in terms of um, marketing, you utilize the, uh, who does your printing? I guess that's my first question. Um, some of the printing is done by data graphics. And then we, for some, some events where we just need to do a quick one-off, we do some printing at home. Okay. And then um, does the Visitors Bureau help out in any way? In the past, they have helped out with uh, printing the programs. And this year, we're told that they are not going to be doing that. So we are looking at alternate ways of uh, listing our program. And we may do a, maybe a thinner program and put more of our information uh, accessible online from people's um, by using our website uh, or using their iPhones to... Uh, pick up information. Our, um, the, 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 the format that we use for um, the jazzcarsoncity.com website um, should work with um, uh, uh, iPhones and things like that, the smartphones. Okay. Um, and I do want to say your poster is wonderful. Yeah. We're going to work on a new poster this year. We have an art contest. That's that. Okay. Thank you. It's Commissioner Janeo. Um, David, I, I was curious about the paragraph on page 49 in reference to incorporating jazz and beyond as a separate 501. What is the thinking behind this? And, and uh, it's interesting that it is showing up here, and I'd just sort of like to understand the rationale. What brought this on this discussion? Well, that has been a discussion from time to time, and it's... Um, it's you know it's a lot of work putting this together. Uh, the it's almost like that the uh, festival is the tail that wags the dog because we have the Mile High Jazz Band, which was established first around um, 2001. Well, actually started performing around 2001. And so what we we're thinking is at some point we may go for a separate 501c3 organization to uh to do this and um and at that point we probably would want to have something where we would have probably would have to be looking at paid staff unless there's a lot of volunteer people in carson city who want to do a lot of this work that we're doing what is the benefit of moving in that direction to what you do now it would free up time for for um for me uh and others i can think of when Eleanor Bugley. Um, so you'd be separating out and there'd be an, a separate organization that is not involved with you and Ms. Bugley, right? That could possibly be. I mean, which it's just an, a, a not, it'd be another organization that would be, I guess, quite frankly, competing for funds, uh, but might be able to organize this um, somewhat differently, you know. It, it's, it would be interesting yeah. to follow that, that uh, discussion. That's it for me. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions, comments? 
I did have one thing I did want to say before. Can I get that in? Sure. Okay, because because one of the things I was hoping to say at the end was that in case we have problems still with social distancing, when we get to the late August period, when we get to the August period, one of the things we're talking about actively within the planners is doing some of these 25 or so events later in the year when the assumption is that the social distancing and the other restrictions might be less. So in order to fulfill our obligation of doing this, we could do it later in the year. And the other thing is it could also just keep Jazz and Book Beyond as a concept for the, uh, for the people of Carson City to be thinking about throughout the year. So it's not just, you know, 17 days and we're done. So that's one of the thoughts. So we could possibly fill in all the events by the end of the fiscal year. Public safety is, is one of our main concerns. Okay. Mark, do you want to take it from there? Sure. Thank you. I'm going to uh, pass the microphone to uh, Peter in from the DA's office for a moment. Uh, this question is for Commissioner Bugley. Um, I intuited that David is your spouse. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so just to clarify, um, under the conflicts definitions, under NRS 281A.065, and in a private capacity includes the commitment of your spouse. So um, you're going to be conflicted out of this uh, application. Um, and so you're going to need to recuse yourself. And Karen, is, is, is uh, Commissioner Beagley able to uh, read a modified version of that uh, recusal from the last organization? Um, as long as she just confirms that she understands that she's recusing from this, um, this application is sufficient for the record. Great. So I understand that I'm recusing from this organization too, but it was mentioned in my statement. Okay. Great. Okay, then it sounds like we're good then. We're fully covered. Thank you. I just combined them in the first statement. Okay. Yeah. I thought you had. Yeah. So, uh, commissioners, when you're, uh, if you need a moment to um, add up your score. We'll start, start with Karen, Karen, uh, with uh, Commissioner About, followed by Commissioner Deneo when you when you are ready. Okay, Mark, I am ready. This is Karen About, and I gave them a twenty nine. Um, I'm not sure that it they have a definite following. I'm not I'm not so sure it's a new audience engagement. So I just dock one point for that. That's it. Thank you. Okay, it's Commissioner Deneo. Ready? Yeah, I have also uh, scored a 29, and uh, and mine is uh, investment in the project proposals. I, it's just, it's still not clear, and I'm still having a little bit of a difficulty as to how this is all going to happen, but maybe the money just sits in a pot, so where it happens down the line, it happens. But, but I think we need to be careful about uh, where this money sits and how, how it's used. Anyway, I scored a 29. Commissioner Leva? Uh, I scored this one a 30 as well. Commissioner McBride? So this is uh, Commissioner McBride, and me and my cat give this uh, score of 30. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Commissioner Ramirez? Go, <laughs> cat! This is Commissioner Ramirez, and I am a 30 also. We need, I, I feel that these uh, organization is bringing um, happiness to our community. We're so very much needed. So, 30. Thank you. So, the average score out of 30 is 29.6, yielding an 80, sorry, a 98.67%. Amount requested was 5,000 times the score, yields a $4,933 um, recommendation. I'll move on to Wild Horse Productions if we get Carol Scott uh, unmuted on the phone. Thank you. I see I'm unmuted. Hi, Carol. How are you? Good. How are you doing? 
Uh, thanks for your patience with this. Let me know when you're ready and I'll give you your three minutes. I am ready. Here we go. Hi, I'm Carol Scott, Executive Director of Wild Horse Productions, home of Wild Horse Children's Theater, ages 5 to 18, and Wild Horse Stage Company for teens and young adults. We requested funding of $5,000 for our production of the Northern Nevada premiere of Disney's Moana Jr., scheduled for three weekends in December, including one sensory-friendly performance. Moana Jr. is the story of a young girl's journey of self-discovery and how she has to dig deep to learn how to harness the power that lies within. I cannot think of a better show to reopen Wild Horse Children's Theater. Although we do not know when we will reopen, we know that in these trying times, we're all harnessing the power that lies within, standing brave and tall, and finding the hero within us all. Due to the unprecedented COVID-19 crisis, Wild Horse Productions has been severely challenged like never before. We are experiencing a devastating loss of revenue due to the postponement of two productions, Heather's and Alice in Wonderland, that were set to open this past March and April. More than 80% of our income comes from revenues related to performances. We will also lose revenue from our summer theater camps, school workshops, and some grant funding. We told our young actors in the postponed productions that they will perform on stage. Contingency plans include moving the production into spring 2020, and Wild Horse Productions is already keeping our young artists engaged in virtual arts programs and workshops and our directors are participating in a teaching intensive at the end of the month on presenting a musical online. Rest assured, we will be ready and able to lead the char charge to reopen our company with the highest safety measures in place to protect our Walters, actors, staff, volunteers, and audiences when the time comes. We will emerge from the, this difficult time resilient and prepared for the future, but we need your help. We know that everyone here today has been greatly affected by this crisis, and we thank the Cultural Commission and Redevelopment Authority for providing funding to the amazing organizations that keep the arts alive in our community. We miss our kids, the BAC, the energy of our audiences uh, that they bring to the stage when the lights come up. Theater brings people together. So in these times of social distancing, we have no choice but to wait until everyone is safe and comfortable being close together again. We remain optimistic that one day in the not so distant future, we will be bringing you joy, hope, and laughter through the magic of live theater. Thank you very much, Carol, for that. I think uh, just for clarification, if uh, you were not able to do it uh, winter of 2020, I think uh, you're going to do it spring of 2021, right? Looking at spring 2021, yes. Okay. Great. Thank right. you. Commissioners, let's open the floor for any questions. Okay. I, this is Karen Commissioner Avowd, and I just have a comment. And um, Carol, I want to applaud you for hiring a consultant from your NAC Circuit Writers Grant to assist your board with fundraising, donor engagement, et cetera. That's wonderful. It's really helped. <laughs> That's awesome. And I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Commissioner Deneo and Karen, you beat me to it. I was so impressed when I saw the, the hired the consultants with the circuit riders. Uh, good, good on you, and and I hope it uh, augurs well in the future for you because this is the way to begin building and getting it out there and getting more and more people and dollars to, to help in your project. Anyway, thank you for doing that. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, this, this is Commissioner McBride. I have a couple of questions. Okay. So when I'm looking at the budget page, um, I'm wondering what is sensory friendly equipment modifications training? Uh, well, we are working with a couple of nonprofits. We did our first sensory uh, friendly performance with uh, Disney's Frozen Junior. And uh, we did it by the seat of our pants because we didn't have any funding to get the necessary necessary equipment that we need, uh, which includes um, different seating for the kids, uh, uh, bouncy balls, there's kind of, they don't like to sit in regular seats, headphones and laptops that are used by the participants um, to block out the sound. Uh, we also use the, um, the lobby of the BAC to block out certain areas so they could take a break. And um, those kind of things uh, cost money and we were just, um, piecing things together and asking uh, our volunteers and families to provide those items. And we would love to purchase those 
to have them for our other productions because we intend to continue with at least one sensory friendly performance for each show. Okay. And so I also see this is um, McBride again. I see at the bottom of the budget page that you've applied for $2,500 to cover the expenses for the sensory friendly productions. So what happens if you get that? Well, at this point, uh, we have lost uh, two grants already because they are taking the grant money for special projects and turning them into um, support for the communities. So at this point, I don't know if we'll get that. I know we've already lost two other grants. And our Nevada Arts Council grant, um, they are working at a huge deficit this year. So they're not even sure what the funding is going to be for their programs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mark. Any other questions or comments by the commissioners? Sure. Okay, if not, we will um, tabulate your scores. We'll start with Commissioner Abel. 30. Commissioner Bugley. Thirty. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Deneo. Twenty-nine. Commissioner Leva. Thirty. Commissioner McBride. I gave them for thirty. And Commissioner Ramirez. Thirty. The average score of third out of 30 is 29.8, uh, 99.44%. This time the requested amount of $5,000 yields, uh, yields $4,972. Commissioners, <clears throat> um, I'm sharing my screen right now. The total amounts um, as per your scores for the request equals 17190 You're kind of breaking up. It's breaking up really bad. Commissioners, it looks like um, Mark Salinas has gone offline temporarily. Um, can we take a uh, five minute recess so we can reconnect? Yes, we can. May I, may I speak with you in terms of, uh, you know, the others can take a break, but I'd sure like to get on and see people. This is Barbara Deneo. If I close out my my um, laptop and then re-enter all of the stuff, do you think I can come on?
It's not working, Mark, so go ahead. A moment. There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. We're gonna get we're gonna make this happen. Wild Horse Productions, average score twenty nine point eight percent. Uh, yielding a allocated uh, recommended amount of $4,972. Commissioners, all four applicants, um, total a uh, recommended amount of $17,197. Um, I have uh, spoken to um, community development. They've indicated to me that the remaining funds, um, given um, the uncertainty right now of uh, the next uh, couple months uh, can remain um, eligible for uh, spending on other uh, projects as we go. Um, as in years past, uh, this amount has um, rolled forward. Unused amounts have rolled forward or surrendered, forfeited amounts have rolled forward. So, um, commissioners, are you fine with your final scores? Yes, there, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I cried. I would ask um, that uh, if you look at the at the staff report, that one commissioner who can see the screen um, call out the applicant name in column A and the amount in column L, please. Uh, nice and slow, so Danielle can hear us. Okay, this is Commissioner Aboud. I can see the screen. The BAC on column L, 2458. Carson City Symphony, 4833. Mile High Jazz, 4933. And Wild Horse Children's Theater, 4972. Uh, Commissioner Abel, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Deneo, would you like to uh, get a motion to approve uh, those recommended amounts by the commission? Uh, yes, let me read uh, the, the motion to everyone. Oh, this is just so interesting. Um, the cultural. <laughs> trying to find them. I move. I can't make the motion. Somebody else has to. I can do it, Mark. Do you want me to? Yes, please. All right. This is Commissioner Abel. I move to recommend to the Redevelopment Authority the allocation of fiscal year 2021 re redevelopment arts and culture special event funding as follows. The Brewery Arts Center, $2,458. The Carson City Symphony, $4,833. Mile High Jazz, $4,933. And Wild Horse Children's Theater, $4,972 for a total amount of $17,197. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second that. This is McBride. Any other discussion? Anything you want to say, Mark, or should, can we just vote? Yeah, go ahead and vote. All right. Let's call for the vote. Commissioner About, aye. Hughley, aye. Deneo, aye. Commissioner Ramirez, aye. And then lastly, Commissioner McBride. Uh, aye. Okay, that's a uh, unanimous approval then. Thank you. Did we get Chris's vote? Yes, I heard it. Okay. It was I. It was an I. Okay. okay. I want to thank uh, the applicants. I want to thank the commissioners for your patience in this. Uh, now, instead of looking at numbers, we can look at some pretty pictures. Boy, I'll tell you, it's. Uh, well done, everybody. I'm very impressed that we were able to get through that in under these circumstances. <laughs> Gee whiz. Okay. So are we move, we're moving on to item number six. 
uh, presentation of the Department's uh, Arts and Culture and Carson City Culture Commission and Fiscal 1920 Annual Report and Fiscal 2021 Work Plan. You want to pick it up, Mark? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, as you know, since we had to cancel our uh, March meeting, that threw off um, uh, our ability to uh, uh, get our annual reports uh, discussed among us to put in front of the Board of Supervisors as per uh, CMCC 2.41 uh, by May 1st. <clears throat> Uh, in order to get uh, to that checkpoint, um, it was advised by the uh, city manager's office to uh, create an abbreviated uh, annual report by the chair and vice chair. Um, as is typical, I also um, uh, add to that my report, although not required to do so, just so that the Board of Supervisors know that um, here in this uh, first uh, uh, four out of five years of the arts funding that uh, we're working in tandem uh, towards some effect. So what we have here is um, what uh, the, the abbreviated report was only a two-pager, all text, no visuals. Uh, what we do is very much visually oriented. And so what I would uh, propose just for discussion today is to go over um, a packet, which I would like to put in print and give to those Board of Supervisors and the CTA board and the CTA ED and city manager and deputy city manager, uh, sort of a, uh, a bound uh, leaflet, bound booklet here that shows the work uh, done um, since um, October 2016. So we can really have a good look at the, um, at the composition of all of our efforts, getting the big picture. Um, this can be presented, this sort of robust uh, form of present presentation. I was instructed, I was told that it can be, it can be uh, um, re reported to the Board of Supervisors later on in the year once some of the um, distancing um, um, recommendations have been lifted. But I think it's really important to stay, um, you know, we don't want to be out of sight, out of mind. And so I wanted to, what I wanted to present to you is sort of a compilation of, of what I put together on my end. Um, and I wanted to share that with you. I'm not going to go through every one of these, but I just want you to see, to see the format. Um, you know, the philosophical overview that creation, education, and relation are three core components uh, um, akin to any successful public arts program, but also uh, those are the elements that comprise a, a, a vital and uh, a vibrant community. Um, one of the first um, projects we did was the Fashion Films in February. 2017, um, followed up by the Nevada Day Parade, a Parade of Arts and Entertainment in 2017. I'll speak a little bit more um, about the projects of 2019-20. I just want to cover uh, this category of creation. Here we have Michelle uh, Riley's piece. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that this this event is already like in, in the works right now. It takes months to put together. This is the airport, the Reno Tahoe International Airport show. Uh, if you recall, um, 187 attendees enough to fill up a Boeing 737 um, flew in, uh, you could say, from Carson uh, to attend this event. 200 linear feet of airport. It's the largest arts uh, event that they've had. And in addition to the 200 linear feet, they've offered us 50 linear feet uh, in the other terminal, which I think is going to be really fantastic because that covers um, a lot of, I believe that covers Southwest, and that will really get in front of all those legislators flying in and out of uh, Reno headed to Carson City. Wonderful. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Um, they celebrate culture grant. I will be uh, reporting a little bit later in the meeting about some of the cancellations, uh, unfortunately, of, um, of those events. But it's a fantastic opportunity to really uh, stick to the language of the arts and culture master plan that supports uh, ethnicity. Uh, in that, you know, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion is, is really important. And I'm happy to say that in 2019, we um, were partnering with uh, three fantastic artists that show uh, really a, a core component of diversity uh, in Nevada. 
One of those was a mural at elementary at Empire Elementary School. This put a new piece of artwork, two new pieces of artwork in Ward 3. Uh, and again, I'm also working on this. This is the uh, for 2021 Arts Advocacy Day. Uh, we usually play a host to several hundred people all throughout um, the state that come uh, to uh, the legislature building, working with Cultural Alliance Nevada, who's the arts advocacy arm for the state. And instead of all those hundreds of people leaving uh, after the orange juice and croissants are done at 10 a.m., uh, we put together a ticketed event, which was a sellout to keep every, all those arts advocates and arts uh, supporters in Carson City. And I uh, brought colleagues in from all over uh, Nevada to speak about their arts programming. We had the Rimsky Krasikov uh, Quartet from St. Petersburg here, and Zet Gold, a uh, artist from Las Vegas here as well. Um, a lot of what uh, my work here is informing the public, but as well as informing other departments about what we do. And this was a project um, for the National Arts and Humanities Month. Uh, one of the, I think the milestones for this department was the big read grants. Um, doesn't really fit on one screen. I just wanted to sort of hit all the moments of that, which included me fixing grits. Thanks, thank you, Charlie. Hey, Bao, for that recipe. Uh, fixing grits at the firehouse, and then a fantastic uh, wheat paste mural in partnership with, with redevelopments and we worked with uh, Commissioner Ramirez's group and the Boys and Girls Club. Um, on to uh, education. I believe the um, creation of a art gallery in City Hall is critically important. Uh, we did an art workshop in 2017. Last year in 2019 we had a really successful um, summer artist lecture series in partnership with two um, uh, local entities, Silver City and Gardnerville. Here are two uh, examples of uh, photographs from each location, but these were artists who literally came from all over the world. And uh, we were able to uh, bring them here to Carson City from those respective uh, arts residencies. And I can tell you something that when you have 25 people attending a uh, 5 o'clock to 6.30 p.m. lecture on a Thursday, everyone in that room goes out to dinner immediately afterwards. I believe the next three slides um, really focus on what I've been working on now uh, amid the pandemic to show how arts can um, assist the mission of some of our other uh, departments who um, are struggling. Um, our sticker design competition, which was in partnership with the clerk's recorder's office, I had to pivot several times. Uh, two weeks after the uh, launch of our press release, which asked uh, high school kids here in Carson City to, dev to design new I voted stickers, uh, schools were closed. Uh, two weeks later, uh, we went to mail in ballots. So the, uh, the original concept of printing stickers and having them available at the polling locations uh, changed. But uh, nonetheless, within uh, the short period of time that we've pivoted, thank you so much to Carson High and, and Patricia uh, Ababio there for submitting, her class submitted 212 individual thumbnail sketches. They didn't have the graphic design equipment on their laptop to complete um, our requirements, but uh, we honored them with, uh, um, with two top prizes and eight honorable mentions. Um, the kids are, all of their... Um, designs are going to be used when we reboot for the uh, general election. And so um, it was covered by so much great press. And um, and uh, the designs, you can see my mug down here. Uh, the designs, I believe, uh, within the week or so are going to be available on Facebook to uh, use as a profile frame. A profile frame. Uh, next we have... Um, hashtag Nevada Safe, uh, which really took off as well. Uh, KO, KOLO8 came down and um, recorded this. This was uh, utilizing digital imagery of some of our local artwork and, and um, 
photoshopping a face covering on the imagery, whether it's a sculpture, whether it's a mural. And each Thursday at noon, Carson City Government website releases this and reminds people that they can stay safe, uh, socially distance while enjoying our public art here in Nevada. Uh, to date, I believe it's over 7,500 people uh, have been uh, reached uh, with this on social media. It's a great opportunity to get those artists involved to, uh, you know, with the galleries being closed and museums canceling shows, it's a great opportunity for these artists to get a little attention. Uh, good morning, uh, Carson City also uh, have brought these artists in for interviews and each um, each campaign has a fun fact uh, straight from the artist. And then uh, finally, sort of wrapping up, you know, where I've been able to um, uh, help out other organizations is that Capital City Reads uh, approached uh, me last year wanting to partner. And I said, Let's, if you remember, uh, the commission allocated money to partner with them this year. Uh, they had to change to uh, audio and digital books, right? Uh, they were also um, clever enough to partner with uh, Parks and Rec. So here we have uh, My First Summer in the Sierra by John Muir. He's the founder of the Sierra Club. He's a naturalist. He's a hiker. He's even an artist. He actually has illustrations in this book. And right now, if you have a library card, you can go online and download the book or download uh, the audio book. And so um, our sponsorship uh, totally covered that. And I think uh, really breathes some, literally some fresh air into the community to get out and um, get some exercise, enjoy the great outdoors while supporting the literary arts. Mayor's Arts Award, uh, focusing now on relation, the Mayor's Arts Award, I think was a fantastic opportunity to, for us to really um, take a look at ourselves and hold our heads up high. That uh, yielded the First Lady Presents. I will um, give an update on this. Uh, this has uh, received a lot of press as well, utilizing the governor's mansion as a tourist destination for school uh, tours and uh, to get some of our uh, contemporary artists artwork up there um, on temporary exhibition. Also, relationship, uh, the relationship with the community is making sure that we have a, a cultural commission that's diverse and that represents um, um, all, all um, aspects of our community. Correct. Um, our 10th anniversary luncheon celebration, that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, we're with Silver City as an arts uh, and culture sister city. And then um, through a grant from the Nevada Arts Council, um, just uh, May 1st, I wrapped up a 10-month exchange with the town of Tonopah, and that was a rural urban exchange program. We were actually considered the urban entity in this exchange. And we partnered with um, breweries and hotels and ghost walks in each of our cities, did an online contest. And we had, as you can see here, uh, two examples of um, people from out of town visiting each one of our cities. Uh, this family here uh, are actually, they're from uh, California. They heard about this, uh, submitted, put their name in the baskets, and they won the uh, one of our many uh, Tonopah trips. And this uh, husband, uh, this sorry, father and daughter from Hawthorne uh, came to Carson City. And we had a total of four uh, exchanges, thanks to all those donations from those businesses. Uh, our paint sip and chip continues to be a success with growing numbers of donations, as well as uh, helping um, our state museum. Um, if you recall, I solicited the editor of uh, Reno News Review to make a special event in Carson City category that was uh, overlooked over the years. And um, that's really taken off. And so that's sort of a, um, the format of what I'd like to put in print form for our elected officials here in Carson City. Here's our work plan. Uh, the objective is to implement the Carson City's uh, Arts and Culture Master Plan. So what are our performance measures, right? It's the ongoing creation, education, relation strategy to collect data, such as grant awards, cash contributions, non-cash contributions, tickets and sales, donated labor, audience attendance, media exposure, and, um, and listing those purchased art assets. Um, that's done through uh, developing our awareness through unified branding, marketing, and messaging. Uh, 
uh, integrating public art into gateway or corridor improvements, and then creating signature events or creative placemaking, which promotes Carson City as a cultural um, destination. The, that's the last page of this. I, I will add that in our uh, Tuesday meeting next week, I will be adding to this document arts data of every one of those events that we just saw uh, from 2006 to present that highlights and pull out uh, the information uh, of each event that related to any grants, awards, cash contributions, non-cash contributions, ticket sales, donated labors, and a lot of that information. Uh, we've received incredible uh, media exposure, uh, not only here in Carson City, but uh, outside of Carson City, which uh, works, which dovetails with uh, our funding mechanism, which is tourism. So I'm excited to, um, it's a lot of data to pull together. And I think I have a template now that will make it a little bit easier to keep track of it as we go forward. Uh, but that's information I'm going to be uh, looking forward to uh, presenting uh, next week to put uh, with this. Um, well done, well done. Yeah, I need a glass of water now, okay. <laughs> if, um, when I, what I can add is, you know, we're not on the calendar to, to make this presentation, but what I will say is that commissioners, um, chair and, and vice chair myself did the best that we could to make an abbreviated uh, report. If there's anything in there that you feel should be added, what I might ask is that within the coming weeks, coming months, uh, I, I don't see us, you know, going to the board of supervisors anytime soon with this, with the next two months, let's say, but, uh, you know, you, you can, uh, edit and add a, a little paragraph if you want, or, or give me a call and we can, uh, um, if there's something here that you feel is missing or something that should be highlighted more, uh, please let um, either the chair, vice chair, and myself know, and we can um, add that language uh, to what has already been uh, submitted. Ed, Mark, in, in the one that I, I wrote, I wanted to single out Milo McCormick uh, and thank him for his participation during the time that he was here. Um, I, I, it was wonderful to have him with us. Right, and I, I, I did receive Milo's uh, resignation letter. Unfortunately, uh, being a commissioner requires a residency in Carson City. Uh, he is, um, he and his fiance um, have recently just moved to Silver City. Um, actually, <laughs> the house that they're in is um, this image here that Jim McCormick uh, built. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Nice. So um, he, he assures us that he's still going to be part of the community. Uh, of course, his mother, Quest Lakes, is, is a big supporter of the arts and it really helps uh, promote our messages out there in Silver City. And um, it's uh, it's not for farewell, it's, it's just uh, see you later. But yeah, I thank uh, Milo for, uh, for what he's done. And you know, as I like to say, uh, once a commissioner, always a commissioner. And that's where I interject my scary laugh. Uh, but uh, we'll always be uh, looking for commissioners to help us along our way, uh, both past and, and present. Interesting, it's one of those till we meet again. Okay, let's move on to, uh, for a possible action item, agenda item number seven. It's discussion and possible action regarding the adoption of the Department of Arts and Culture's project calendar and budget for public art programming for fiscal 2021. Again, poor Mark, I hope you got some water because you're up again. Okay, here we are. Does everybody have the sheet that's horizontal that lists, that was sent out? That yes. list all. Okay, so everybody has that, so we know where we are. Okay. So the past year or so, we've been uh, in the habit of putting um, uh, the calendar and project together, just to put some um, some rails, some some guide rails on our, our fiscal year. Um, as you know, um, ideas ultimately have to be executed by the appropriate staff and budget. And I think this is a great way to for us to get a little glimpse of the fiscal year that we're entering, as well as um, allow uh, the commission to allocate funds. <laughs> the total projected funds uh, that tourism is is giving me for next fiscal year, 
chorus is down, and it's down by about a third. Uh, the commission, uh, the CTA just had a board meeting prior to ours. I wasn't able to listen to the entire thing, but of course, their information is being updated, uh, you know, weekly. Um, the available funds, and these are estimated funds right now for fiscal uh, 2021, is just uh, less than $40,000, which is much lower than it was last year, of course. Um, so the question is, how do we uh, maintain our signature events, hold true to trying to um, bring the bell of tourism, but uh, be obliged to these numbers? As I did last year um, in wanting to the commission to be um, more active until they have more of a vote, I've allocated uh, almost $10,000 here, um, if you can see the screen. Um, of course, uh, my position, as I've mentioned last year, was is I'm fiscally responsible for the uh, budget. And as my salary and benefits comes out of the 1%, um, it doesn't, uh, doesn't reflect uh, another, other municipalities where the 1% for arts is entirely all uh, for the commission to, um, to, to allocate. So let's, go, let's look at our year-round year programs right now. City Hall Gallery, and of course, you know, echoing the, the, the concern that some of our applicants have here today, um, all this is allocated money. It's not spent money. Uh, it'd be great if some of these things can happen. I'm going to hope that they and, and work hard that, that they do. City Art Gallery, uh, allocating money to that. That goes to, towards curatorial stipends, graphic design, printing, um, looking for three exhibitions. Uh, Truckee Meadow Community College. Uh, was on deck prior to this. I'll reach out to them and see if we can uh, maybe squeeze them in, uh, provided City Hall opens up. Uh, First Lady Presents, um, that is still happening. The Governor's Mansion is closed to the public. What we decided to do was allow Ronnie Rector to have the entire uh, uh, duration of 2020. Um, we thought that was fair. This this allocates uh, two exhibitions in case that changes. Uh, those are six month uh, exhibitions. For one artist. I put aside some local some money for local partnerships. Um, some local entities, uh, the Rotary, the Neighborhood Improvement District, have reached out uh, to me. They're interested in um, in partnering with Department of Arts to make sure we get some public art out this fiscal year. Um, I've also applied for an NV Energy grant. Uh, Jackson's is, uh, will likely make a presentation to us tomorrow. I just want to set some, uh, side, some money aside as needed um, to perhaps match uh, efforts in case we need you know, lighting or signage uh, to show these partners uh, that we're uh, also uh, invested and involved in the decision making. Um, that goes for regional and state partnerships as well. And I put $2,000 uh, towards that. And that could be partnerships like what we do with Tonopah, could be with destination marketing organizations. Um, you know, I think all, um, I think we're all going to need to lean on each other a bit to get tourism rebooted. And so this money is set aside to make some partnerships and you know whether that's touring exhibitions online um instagram exchanges and, and and so on and so forth i think there's room for uh, for that partnership or at least i hope there will be uh, celebrate culture grants is uh, a grant uh, that the commission uh, receives applications for on a rolling basis last year the amount you approved was seven thousand i moved that to five so let's look at what we have in October in August 2020. We have an open studio tour as part of the arts and culture master plan. It, it uh, tasks uh, the department with creating uh, like art walks and art tours. So this is an organization. They've come up with this idea. I put money aside for uh, a, a nice graphic designer to make maps and brochures to get this up and going. Um, it is in part with the it overlaps with the, um, the jazz festival. Uh, which I believe is still on the books to happen. And I really hope that somehow um, this open studio tour can safely manifest itself. So I think it's a real fresh idea. Um, of course, our, our partners in Silver City and Gardnerville, 
their artists are not uh, their artists roster has changed maybe we can pull a couple of artists to do uh, some lectures at the brick as we did i don't know i've set us aside some money for those speaker stipends usually we have two speakers a night paint sip and chip we're going to be reaching out to the library to see if we can um, bring them in as a presenter since they're the ones utilizing the makerspace um, the i voted sticker design competition i'm asking for the commission's uh partnership in that um, I believe that the Carson City School District uh, uh, is going to really send us even more app, even more than the 212 uh, submissions come November. And um, hopefully we'll be able to put these in print. That was a fantastic, um, fantastic, fantastic project. I, I, I really think between the airport and the I Voted Sticker Competition, those are highly, are, are are two projects that receive the most um, media attention really throughout the state. And it really engaged those kids, you know, they're at home. I'm certain that they were proud to have something that actually left their four walls and roof and actually um, made a dent in what we uh, feel is, you know, creative here in Carson City. Those stickers, those I vote stickers are, should be custom made and, and we're helping us do that. Um, City Arts Mark, taking flight. Yes. Mark, this is Commissioner McBride. I have a question about the um, allocation you put next to the voted uh, I voted stickers. Is that for the printing of the stickers? Yeah, so our plan that we're, we're working with right now is to choose two winners and to have those winners, uh, based upon the numbers that the clerk's office recommended, have those two designs be printed in uh, lots of 7,000. So a total of 14,000 stickers, two designs. Uh, this amount covers uh, doing that. It covers um, two didactic panels at each polling location and um, some honorable mention and top prize stipends. Okay, thank you. Uh, Advocacy Day post party, a lot goes into that. Uh, we're looking to partner with uh, Sierra Arts Foundation they uh, handled all the ticketing. Uh, last year, we had it at uh, the union, um, setting aside money. Uh, hopefully, that can happen again. You'll see in March 2021 also, I thought it might be uh, a great opportunity uh, to have Randy Cohen. You know, of course, he had to cancel. But maybe he returns during our Art Advocacy Day, right? And maybe he's a presenter there. Um, the original amount was $2,500 that the commission uh, approved to, for those expenditures. Um, I talked to Randy. He said he's able. He's uh, sorry. He's open in March, um, so that's where that rests right now. And then finally, April of 2021, the Capital Reads program, which the commission is currently um, supporting right now. So there are one, two, three, four items that I would recommend. Um, for the commission to consider allocating towards the next fiscal year. As you can see, um, these allocations are not uh, the entire amount available. It's, uh, I want to hold back on that just a bit until we get further and until we see April's numbers and May's numbers from the hotel industry. Um, and, you know, echoing what the CTA said at their meeting, these are going to be numbers that we're going to have to watch um, as we go. And, of course, um, the department and the commission are um, only, got, only obligated um, uh, between ourselves as to what uh, we um, can manage uh, given the fiscal, you know, parameter, parameters. Are there any questions on any of that content? No, the, art, the only public art panel uh, that I would foresee we, us needing in November would be two commissioners, and that is to help choose the um, the sticker design competition. Uh, my thanks to Commissioner Abound, Commissioner uh, McBride, for doing that um, for the primary. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, um, you know, as far as what I have up here as needed for local partnerships, regional and state partnerships, I'll speak to a couple of ideas, I think, next week that I might have um, underway that uh, would allow, you know, I think we all 
can agree that we're going to need a wow factor in Carson City to help the economy and revive, revive business and to get tourism back on track. I think this is not an forefront in showing what it can do to help manifest the missions of several, um, you know, of the, of the Visitors Bureau and of other um, community departments. Um, an idea or two in, in discussion with the Rotary and the Neighborhood Improvement District. And uh, as some of that is uh, clarified between us, uh, we can look at the budget and see um, what we can um, what we can secure in addition to um, those organizations interesting in contributing towards us, which is exciting. It can be a perfect time. Okay, it's Commissioner Janeo, I, I've invited Mark to be a presenter on the Zoom meeting because the Rotary Club continues to meet, but it's on Zoom, and he will have the opportunity uh, the last Tuesday of the month to make a presentation about arts and culture, and in particular, uh, looking towards the future in terms of helping uh, fund a project that still has to have a little finessing done to it, and then it will be presented to folks. But but I think it's an opportune time to, to bring in the business community. So thank you, Mark, for doing that. Sure, and I, I will add to that that some of the arts data uh, that I am collecting reflects these contributions of community partners. You know, uh, I think that says a lot when um, Carson City organizations come to us saying that they want to invest in us, that those numbers um, are being documented as well. Great. Okay, well, we've that's a long presentation, Mark, and well done, and we have all the numbers in front of us. So the projected funding of 39,828 revenue from the 1% transit occupancy tax is what we're talking about. And you, you all have a, 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 a memo given to you that has the recommended board action. Again, I can't make the motion. Is there someone who would like to make a motion? Barbara, I will make it. This is Commissioner About. Go ahead. I move to approve the Department of Arts and Culture's project calendar and budget for public art programming for fiscal year 2021 as presented. Okay. Is there a second? I second. This is Commissioner About. Any comments before we vote? So we've got a uh, you know motion and second. Anybody want to state anything further? The public want to say well, the public isn't going to say anything. So on the motion, can we have a vote, please? About aye. Uli aye. Janeo aye. Mr. Ramirez aye. McBride, aye. Where's Chris? This is Leva, uh, Christopher Leva, aye. Motion's unanimous and approved. Thank you, everyone. Well done, Mark. Boy, a lot of work done. And uh, we'll go now, department reports. Mark, what do you want to do? Well, um, th thank you for that. Um, I will be uh, relocating to City Hall uh, tomorrow. Um, we will no longer be located at the Adams Hub. So uh, my thanks to Public Works for bringing two truckloads of um, Department of Arts materials and supplies and files over to City Hall. Um, that's going to be my permanent home now. Nice. Um, so if um, if the public or any commissioners uh, want to schedule appointments, there's certainly room to do it there, but I will no longer be um, a resident at the Adams Hub. Um, just running through my notes here. Um, Mark, how is that helping in terms of getting to know, you know, other staff uh, at City Hall and, and beginning to, you know, have a bond developed between the different departments with arts and culture. How's that working? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, Mark Slanis, for the record. Uh, that actually began March of 2018 um, when I was transferred from the Visitors uh, Bureau to City Hall. 
And um, those three projects that I've been working on with the Clerks Recorders Office, the uh, Carson City Health and Human Resources um, Services, and uh, Health and Human Services, and the uh, Carson City Library are uh, three great reflections of um, working closer with city entities now that I'm literally there. Um, of course, there is no longer any rent paid at the Adams Hub, so we're looking to uh, invest um, there in City Hall and save those costs. Good. Good, um, yeah. The Gateway Monuments, uh, last month I spoke with the city manager and the CTA's uh, executive director. Um, the good news is that the grant for $15,000 that I applied for to go towards the Gateway Monument that was going to be at the roundabout right at South Carson Street uh, was initially approved uh, at full funding. However, uh, with um, as many organizations are doing, um, granting organizations they have rescinded the grants, and so they're no longer um, um, giving money, uh, it sounds like, for the entire fiscal year, for all the cuts that they have to make. Um, with that, uh, I looked at the numbers, and for us to make that happen would take probably 45% of our reserves. And in council with uh, the CTA and the city manager's office, uh, we felt it was best to press Can something be done to help straighten out Mark's phone? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, you know, those are reimbursed grants as well. If they cannot uh, provide the event with the fiscal year, I did notify them. They will have to reapply. Well, you don't know down the road what changes might happen. We'll just have to hold our, cross our fingers and hope at this point in time. So, is that it for department reports? That's it. Thank you. Okay, commissioners, anybody want to put anything on the table? Any comments? Any reports? Um, this is Commissioner Ray about. I just want to say that all the flower baskets are sponsored, and so we'll have a whole horticultural breath of fresh air going up June 1 downtown. Um, the flower baskets will be hung. Um, concert Under the Stars was canceled uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and but despite all of this, um, the greenhouse project was able to raise fifty-two thousand dollars for its outdoor classroom at um, at uh, Carson High. And the school district, on our behalf, we had applied for a Pennington grant, and because our lease with the school district is a five-year lease, um, the Pennington Foundation wouldn't grant. But the school district felt that they would apply on our behalf. They got it, so we are fully funded and going to break ground the end of May. Oh, congratulations. And I have spoken with your new executive director who is going to come and make a report to the Rotary Club to help get them to get behind it, too. Excellent. Thank you. And I just want to thank the local restaurants, the Union, Cachina Lupo, and Gather, because we were able to have uh, fundraising events before everything shut down. Lovely. Lovely. Anybody else? Anyone else want to share good yes. news? Yes, Bugley. Um, I, I just wanted to report that the Capital City Arts Initiative and the Carson City Symphony Association both applied for CARES grants, and we were the only organizations eligible to apply in Carson City. So we'll keep you posted about how that goes. If selected, the funding would start in July. Oh, that's lovely. Hope that hope that comes through for you. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Anyone have any future agenda items that you want to uh, have put on the, I guess, for the next meeting, which, by the way, is uh, May 19th? 
It's going to be at 5.30, right? <laughs> Not 6.30 like it says on my machine. Yeah. 5.30, uh, right? Commissioner McBride. This is Commissioner yep. McBride, and I just want to bring up... Um, Next week, we're going to be looking at a draft of the public art policy, Mark. So um, I have well, 10 chapters. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, because I have a question sure. about that. Sure. There's, um, my goal was to, my promise to the Board of Supervisors last year was to complete a, uh, a full draft chapter, which is um, um, to you're cutting out. You're cutting out again. Okay, yeah. All right. At this time. You looked at verse 6. The message on the screen says the bandwidth is, is uh, fading. Oh. Uh, hmm. So, Terry McBride, can you just uh, put your question out there? Yeah, so my question about that, so Mark, are you going to present that to us at the next meeting? Kind of. Yes, I will be presenting it. It will just be for discussion only. I don't expect the commissioners to read those that whole 10 chapters. I want it uh, to you. Okay. So my question, Mark, um, before you go much further is, would um, would it be good for you to give us time to comment on that before the meeting, like so that we can um, make our comments on the draft and just have those ready at the meeting? Uh, about sixty percent of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Is that acceptable that we get an opportunity to see it? Well, why not? And and draft our questions. Yeah, that would make the meeting go a little faster. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, let me get my answer in here in real quick. Um, I'm just going to present the 10 chapters to the commission. Uh, I'm not expecting uh, the commission to turn around that 10 chapters in a week. I don't see us doing that until later on in the fall. I just wanted to have that document in your hands uh, um, in preparation for what Jackson's proposal was going to be, because I think it gives a very full um, analytic uh, pr uh, procedures to, to, to what we're going to be doing in the future. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any, anything else, Mark, that you want to add? Because we're close to. I would like to say thank you to Pierin and Danielle and and Desi and a whole host of other people that are behind the scenes that make um, these cultural commissions happen on a uh, bi-monthly basis. But especially today, um, given all of the obstacles uh, with today's meetings, they're facing obstacles and all those other departments at the same time. And so I want to thank them for their patience and their um, and their smile. Thanks. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. The Unsung Heroes uh, will put you right in that same group. Uh, uh, anybody up for adjourning? So moved. Wait, wait. Uh, was a public comment offered at the end. We are still offering public comment. So, Desi, is there anyone on the line uh, to offer a public comment? There is no public comment. Thank you. Yeah, so that would have surprised me. But you're right that that, that should have been put out there. So you know, it's my understanding that we don't have to legally have motions to adjourn and so on and so on, but to just say thank you to everybody for going through uh, kind of an interesting, different uh, meeting. Yes. <laughs> and we'll see you same time, same station. But I want to work with Desi to figure out how I'm going to get in here and because I want to see everybody. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Bye, all. Thank you. I'll Thank see you. you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, meeting is adjourned. You can leave the meeting. Good night.